Today we're gonna talk about pushing the zones. Do I? Should you? And if I do, what do I do it for? So let's talk about zones. Welcome everybody to Vlogmas. This is my gift from me to you where I am giving you lots and lots of bonus videos every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday where I'm answering your questions. And you guys have been asking so many fabulous questions and I'm gonna keep doing this. So make sure if you have questions, put them in the comments down below. Um, I will be doing some summary videos, summary, I don't know, roundup videos where I pull a lot of questions together and I'll try to get through as many as I can. But some of these questions, I thought to myself, I can't just write one or two sentences. I could answer this across an entire video. And today we're hitting Melanie's question. Are you pushing the zone by growing things that aren't usually grown in your area? If so, what? Thanks. That's a great question, Melanie. Cause I think this is a conversation. This, this, when I read this, I was like, Ooh, I want to talk about this. And I'm gonna to get to the plants, but I really wanna talk a little bit about zones first. I'm really passionate about talking about zones. So just to go back for anyone who doesn't know what we mean when we say zones, zones are basically the United States Department of Agriculture's hardiness zones. And it's not just like any hardiness, it's cold hardiness. Because what they're doing is they look at the average temperature across 30 years. And then basically whatever your average lows were, they're gonna go and say, you fit into this bracket. So. You're gonna be a zone eight, a zone nine, zone 10. So I live in St. Pete, I am zone 10A. The difference between a zone nine and a 10 is 10 degrees difference in our average lows. And the difference between an A and a B is five degrees difference between, and that's it. Now, that tells us, as you can guess, just a tiny piece of the picture when it comes to growing things. And there's a lot of focus on it up north because they get cold. But we really don't get cold. And here's why I don't like talking a ton about zones because North Florida is zone eight. And my husband, like I was talking about in the It's Getting Personal video, is from Washington State, which has zone eight. And I will tell you after having visited there a few times, um, I would not say that Washington State's climate and growing capabilities is the same as Florida's. They are very different. You may be sitting here going like, wait, we're only talking average lows. Yes, we're just talking about average lows. And it really doesn't even explain kind of how long those average lows go to. I mean, because over in Washington state in their zone eight, I've been there. I've been snowboarding there. I'm not snowboarding in North Florida. It's not happening. We don't even get snow. If we get snow, my kids have been asking a lot lately, like, does it snow in Florida? I'm like, it can, it's just super rare. <laughs> it's super, super rare. And we do not get enough for any of the snow fun time activities that you are asking about. So the, this is like a big difference. And the other piece is it doesn't really talk about highs. If you watch, I know some of you guys, what we were talking about the other day is the acre homestead. And I know a bunch of you guys watch it too, but you hear Becky on that channel who lives at times in zone eight, the highs she's hitting, we don't hit those highs. We don't really get as hot as zone eights and zone nines and zone tens and zone 11. Well, there's no other zone 11s in the continental US other than Florida, but the other zone eight, nines and tens, we don't tend to get as hot as they get. We get hot, don't, don't get it twisted. We definitely get warm and hot, but we don't seem to hit as high. And so because of that, right? And when we look at like zone eights and nines, like Phoenix, Arizona, right? Like they get hundred something degrees in the day, but then they'll swing down to 70, 60 at night. We don't get stuff like that. Especially like where I live in St. Pete, zone 10A. Like the difference between the high in the day and the low is most 10 degrees. We really don't get huge swings very often. And we just kind of sit here. So when we talk about zones, we're really just talking about the cold piece. And this is why tip from me to you is when you're looking for gardening tips, look for people who have similar climates, not similar zones, because zones is such a tiny piece. Climate catches a lot more. Climates is going to catch things like the highs, the lows, the humidity, the amount of rain, the seasons. Um, and because they have a lot of those things similar, they have a lot of the similar um, sun and sun does matter. There's a lot of people who miss out on um, tips because they spend a lot of time on heat tolerant plants and then they wonder why they still fail. And the answer is the sun. So zones just paint a very tiny picture when we're talking about plants. But that wasn't your question. You asked me, do I push the zone? So I was thinking about it. Do I push the zone? Well, I mean, technically anything that's not from zone 10, I'm pushing the zone on. So that goes from, that's like everything in the garden then. That's your vegetables, all, especially your cold weather crops. Cold weather crops would not naturally occur here. Um, we get around it by growing them in our cold season, but 
I mean, that's pushing the zone technically. Bananas, bananas actually are tropical fruit. We're subtropical, so I'm pushing the zone on that, right? Um, papayas, we can argue, I'm not really pushing the zone because there are, there is a species of papaya that's native to Florida, but, and then even native plants. You might be like, well, but you said they're native to Florida. Yeah, but like Stokes Aster and Purple Coneflower are native to like the very tip of uh, the panhandle. And then you got things like Pineland Lantana is like native to like the Miami-Dade area. So I'm pulling stuff from zone 10 B11 and I'll pull stuff for just from zone eight. And I'm like, yeah, we'll put up all of my guard. And I'm gonna put them next to each other. So native plants technically are pushing zone. But when we talk about like the things that people really think about when they think about pushing the zone, they're talking about the things that don't, like you can't just do like easy get arounds with. So my general sentiment about pushing the zone is this. One, you guys heard in one of the videos recently is that my professional career has been working in factories. And specifically, a lot of what I did <laughs> was uh, help groups of people slash the organization, our business unit in that big company, be more efficient. So I would have like the vice president or <laughs> upper leaders of that company would be like, Jacqueline, can you go look at the data and see why this manufacturing line and this manufacturing line run 10% different, but they have the same type of equipment. And I have to go through all the data and be like, well, here's the reasons it's different. And if you focus on these tactics and strategies, then you can close the gap. <laughs> so, and why did they do that? Why did they have me do that for so many years? Um, it's because I naturally like to be efficient. I don't like being wasteful. I don't like doing things the hard way. I am all about, if we have to repeat this thing, I am optimizing it. I am gonna make it simple. And that definitely carries into the garden. And when I usually think about pushing the zone is I think inefficiency. It's a thing that doesn't want to grow here. And now I am trying to force it to grow here. And that is, too time consuming. I mean, you guys hear it in my videos all the time. I'm like, it's too fussy. It's taking too much effort. I don't like it. It's a big baby. <laughs> call lots of plants, big babies. And I'm like, you're gonna be a big baby. If you don't get it together and produce fruit here, I'm gonna get rid of you. I have very little patience for inefficiency. I am all about how do you optimize it? How do you simplify it? How do you streamline it? Go. So that's in like the core of Jacqueline. I'm not gonna be one who's gonna wanna try to like, make it grow if it doesn't want to grow here one two when it comes to pushing the zone all of us are already doing it technically what do you mean Jacqueline well if we're talking about plants that don't want to grow here that we put a lot of effort to making grow here the number one plant is lawns we're all pushing the zone that grass does not want to grow here and do its thing in the way it wants to do it it is unhappy and we keep breeding and trying to optimize it and we put a lot of resources into making it work. That is my biggest poo-poo on pushing the zone. And I'm sorry, Melanie, I hope you don't feel bad because I think it's a great question. You just opened the door for me to talk about this um, because I think it is a good question. But I think that's one of the problems with pushing the zone, no matter what plan it's gonna be, is you are trying to make something work that doesn't want to work. And what's gonna take to make it work is a lot of time, inefficiency, and then pesticides, herbicides, um, and fertilizers, which aren't really helping Florida as a whole out, right? That's part of the big problem with our ecosystems is we are putting a lot of resources into trying to make plants work here that don't wanna work here. So I don't like the concept of pushing the zone, really. And I really would challenge you to consider how you work with plants that want to work here. Then it's, it's easier. Your life's easier. It's financially better in the long run. And from an ecosystem standpoint, it's better for our wildlife and our ecosystems because we're not dumping chemicals. And, and, because I got the engineering background, you know, because there's a group of people I went to school with who ended up at something that drives a big portion of our economy. And a lot of people don't realize about it's interesting a lot of people understand that our economy is driven by tourism the next layer down is agriculture which a lot of people are like oh i would never have thought i remember my friend who interned with me at the company i worked at when we were driving to disney she was in shock at the amount of cow fields here but what people don't understand is kind of right behind that is mining there is some of the largest mines in the united states are actually in florida 
largest cattle farms in Florida, some of the largest mines are in Florida, and a lot of people don't realize it. And they're actually pretty close to a lot of places in Central Florida, and most don't know that. And the thing they're mining for is for fertilizers. So there's a lot we're doing. It's funny. Actually, can I tell you guys a funny story about that? <laughs> you know, you watch commercials, right? And this commercial came on and this company was showing how they were planting trees and stuff like that. And I pointed at it, the commercial and I said, Ben, having watched that commercial with the birds and the tree planting and restoring that, I'm like, what do you think that company does? And he's like, I don't know. It's some sort of eco company, right? I was like, no, that's Mosaic. They are a massive mining company and they are required to do restoration because they do mining and all they're doing is some sort of like brand commercial to make you feel good about the mosaic brand so that people don't freak out when they hear about some sort of like contamination the next time it happens um, and having had co-worker friends who've interned and worked on mosaic I, mm, I don't say anything I am not a fan of us doing the fertilizers and the pesticides and the herbicides so anything that's going to require it um on a lot of levels i'm like no don't do it don't do it but i get it and here's the only time i think like sure you should consider doing it like there's people right you grew up with the peach tree in your backyard and it was your grandma's and you have all the memories and if you want to make that one peach tree grow do it you know but it wasn't your whole yard don't do it don't do it. Don't push the zone. I'm anti-pushing zone. That comes back to a lot of people, right? They don't know what Florida should look like. They don't know what Florida can look like. Um, Cause so many of us aren't from here. We weren't born here. We weren't raised here. And even if we were raised here, we're raised in kind of the cookie cutter neighborhoods. So we don't even know what could be, what was. And I think that is got all the opportunity in the world. There are so many cool things that could be happening in your garden and switching to native plants and edible plants that just aren't complicated, <laughs> I think is, a, is a, I think it's the way to go. So um, Melanie, I love the question. I don't push the zone, but I think it's a great conversation that we should be having about how we really should be leaning into what works here in Florida. So I really appreciate the question. Again, I feel like I poo pooed all over Melanie and I don't want her to feel that way because I think it was a great question. I wanna remind you guys, videos Monday through Friday. If you have a question, put it down below. I will either you have an entire video answering your question or I'll try to catch it in one of the roundup videos that are coming. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye.